Good morning, everyone. It's Rob Timmings from ECT for Health on this very, very windy, very, very smoky uh, December morning. Um, welcome back. Uh, we're going to have a look in this session at heart blocks, uh, first degree, second degree, type 1 and 2, and third degree heart blocks, and the differences between the two. I do a lot of rhythm interpretation in my seminars. Uh, my acute deterioration uh, seminar is, is, has, a, has a whole workshop dedicated to rhythm interpretation. Of course, my cardiac seminar has rhythm interpretation and 12 lead ECG in it as well. Uh, and, and we also have a, a newer program called the Pirate Program, ARRR, Acute Rhythms, Renal and Respiratory. Uh, a program designed for, for uh, medical nurses. And this particular um, topic is one that really, it, 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 it's one of those topics that if you're not doing rhythm interpretation regularly and you're not doing regular ECGs and actually reading that bottom line, that, that strip two at the bottom, um, you get a little rusty with it. It's a bit like blood gases. It's a bit, it's a bit like lots of different skills that, you know, you, you, you you've got to practice it and you've got to keep it keep it fresh and keep it sharp so if you feel that you're a little bit rusty with your uh, with your rhythm interpretation jump on our website and definitely have a look and see where there's a, a rhythm interpretation program coming uh, coming to a place near you or book one and we'll come this particular session is um, is just a small snapshot of what a, uh, a four-hour rhythm interpretation session might look like what we're going to do in this session is just have a look at heart blocks though arguably some of the more more complicated um, concepts to wrap our head around is how do we differentiate between the heart blocks and I'd like to think that the system that I use is nice and simple and that you felt that that you'd be really comfortable with um, with heart blocks at the end of the session. So let's scroll up and have a look at a heart block. First of all, this first heart block that we've got up here on screen. Um, intuitively, if I was going to do a session on first degree, second degree, and third degree heart block, I probably should start at the beginning. And, and that's, of course, what this one is. Let's choose a color. We're going to go with red here. This is a first degree heart block. And what we mean by heart block is that there is a blockage of electrical energy traveling through a portion of the heart. And where that heart block is actually occurring is in the AV node. So just a, just a small little anatomy recap. If I've got my heart here, my atria and my ventricle, my SA node is sitting up in the top right of my atria. My AV node is down in the bottom of my right atria and messages electrical impulses are sent essentially from the SA node down to the AV node. Now if I have a blockage or a delay of electrical transmission through that AV node then I have a heart block and we know that we can see this area or we can see the delay or how long it takes for that message to get through that part of the AV node by having a look at a standard lead to strip. What we're looking for is we're looking for a number of features on the ECG. First of all, we want to identify a P wave. So you can see this here is a P wave. These are all P waves. And under normal circumstances, a P wave from the very beginning of the P wave to the very beginning of this next big sharp wave is the QRS wave. This distance here is normally, so a normal distance, is three to five tiny boxes, which equals, if you're doing it in seconds, 0 0.12 to 0 0.2 seconds. That's considered to be a normal PR interval. That's a normal interval from the beginning of the P wave here, the beginning of the P wave here, to the beginning of the QRS complex here. Now you can clearly see from this first degree heart block that that PR interval, that PR interval is much, much longer on this particular ECG. In fact, if we could count those boxes, we're getting uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight boxes. So with eight little boxes, eight millimeters of delay between the P wave and the QRS complex, what we've actually got here is fundamentally a heart block. And that's our diagnosis. All heart blocks 
share one thing in common. All heart blocks, whether they're first degree like this one, or second degree or third degree heart blocks, all heart blocks have this red criteria. They have a delayed PR interval of greater than 0 0.2 seconds or greater than five little boxes. Greater than five little boxes. So the question here is, if it's a heart block and therefore is a heart block because there's eight little boxes, greater than five little boxes, what makes it a first degree heart block? Why do I call this a first degree heart block as opposed to any other degree? Well, this is where we have to change color. Red is the diagnostic criteria for heart block. And as we've just discovered, all heart blocks here in red, all heart blocks have a long PR interval. So this meets criteria. It's a long PR interval. You can see the long PR interval there, long PR interval. So it's already a heart block. What makes it a first degree, let's change color to blue. What makes it a first degree heart block is that for every P wave that we've got, we have a corresponding QRS. P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS. Can you see that for every P wave, there is a beat. There is a QRS beat that follows it. There's no missing beats. And that's the criteria for all first degree blocks. A first degree heart block will have a long PR interval. It's a heart block. And it will have no missing or no missed beats. Right, that's first degree heart block, done and dusted. I only need to remember the two criteria, long PR interval and no missing beats. So let's have a look at a couple of others. What you can see here, and we're going to look at this top strip to start with, is we can see another rhythm. It's a, these are all rhythm two, uh, all, all um, lead two strips. So we can see here that we've got a P wave and we can measure this P wave here or we can identify the P wave there, a P wave there, a P wave there, a P wave there and a P wave there. We can measure the PR interval here. And so if we go from the very beginning of this PR interval to the very end of the PR interval, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, almost seven. So we've got a long PR interval. So that's the first criteria. That automatically diagnoses it, remember the red criteria, as a heart block. So we know that we've got a heart block. Now, this is a second degree heart block. And there's two types of second degree heart block. There's a second degree type 1 and a second degree type 2. This is a second degree type 1 heart block. Let's have a look at the criteria. Heart block has a long PR. We've already established that there. We measured that at around about 8 or so. The second degree criteria, what was our colour for, for the number? Our second degree criteria is blue. A second degree criteria, if a first degree has no missing beats, then a second degree must have missing beats. And you can see it there. P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, nothing. P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, QRS, P wave, nothing. Can you see that it's missing beats? It meets criteria for a second degree block when it's missing beats. So this is a second degree block, no question. It's a heart block, long PR, and it's a second degree because it's missing beats. Now we want to figure out, well, why is it a type 1? How would that differ from a type 2? A type 1 second degree block is going to be one that has a progressively lengthening PR interval. So let's just rub off some of this stuff here so that we can see what we're talking about. If I could measure the PR interval from this first PR interval here, and I count one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, it's close to seven. That's seven, that one. 
And if I count the very next one in sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's 8. Then this one's missing a beat, so that doesn't count. And if we go through this very next one, we count that, and it's back to normal. That's about 4. The next one is longer again. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's about 6. The next one, if we were to measure it, goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That one's 9. And then it misses a beat. Can you see that it goes from 7, 8, drops a beat, resets? six, nine, drops a beat, and then it will reset again. So a second degree type one is one that has a progressive PR interval. It's not just long, but it gets longer and longer and longer before missing a beat, resets, and then it starts over again. So it is a progressive. PR interval. Alrighty, so three criteria for the second degree heart block type one. First of all, in red, recap, it must have a long PR interval. It must have in blue missing beats. And it must have in purple a progressive PR interval. It gets longer. Happy with that? Let's now move down to the second degree, type 2. So this is our second degree, type 2. heart block. By now you can already tell me why it's a heart block. You're already looking at this PR interval from here to here and we can see that that PR interval is around about six little boxes. You can already see in the blue criteria why we call it a second degree block. Remember the criteria for all second degrees is that they miss beats. There should be a QRS there and there isn't. There should be another QRS there and there isn't. Now, it's a type 2, and our criteria was purple for the type 2. It's a type 2. Remember above here, the type 1 had a progressive PR interval. Well, the type 2 has a constant. A constant PR interval. So let's have a look at what I'm talking about. We measured this PR interval here at the beginning as 6. We couldn't measure this one because there's no QRS. This one here, if we measure that, again, that's 6. So you can immediately see there is a consistency there. We can't measure this one. If I measure this one, again, that distance is 6, little squares. So if you have a look at these, all of the PR intervals are the same. All of the PR intervals are said to be constant. So it's a second degree type 2 heart block. It's a heart block because there's a long PR. It's a second degree because it's missing beats. And it's a type 2 because it's constant. So the type 2, two where this here would be my type 1 Is, has a progressive PR, my type 2 has a constant PR. In other words, they're all the same. Okay, that's my second degree blocks. Now let's have a look at the largest, the, the last one. And this is, Obviously, we're looking at our third criteria. So this is our third degree heart block. 
Now, it's a heart block because when we do look at the PR intervals, we can see at least one PR interval that has a long PR, so at least one. So if I was to choose this one here, from there I'm getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a bit. So this is, we'll call it nine. So I've got a PR interval there of nine. So we immediately know that we've got that red criteria. It is one of the heart blocks. Now, it's called a third degree heart block because it meets the criteria of second degree. It meets the criteria of second degree in that it's got missing beats. So we can see here we've got a, a P wave and a QRS. Then we've got another P wave, but no QRS, and another P wave, and no QRS. And this P wave's hidden here. P wave, no QRS, P wave, QRS. So it's missing beats. It definitely doesn't have a QRS for every PR interval. Uh, sorry, for every QRS. It, 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 it has a P wave, and but not all P waves have a QRS, is what I'm trying to say. Now, let's change color to green to see why it's a third degree, how that differs from the second degree. The second degree blocks, as you'll recall, had one of two criteria. It was a one, a type one, if it had progressive. It was a type two, if it had constant. And we're talking about PR intervals here. But it's going to be called a type 3 if it's erratic. Now the clever textbooks will say that the P wave and the QRS are not associating with each other. And that's true. That's, that's at, a, at, a, at an electrophysiological level. That's exactly what's happening. There's the P wave and the QRSs are, are not talking to each other. There are, there's a dissociation between the P waves and the QRSs. In other words, the atria and the ventricle, the QRS is the ventricle, the atria is the P wave. The atria and the ventricles are just not talking to each other. And where they're not talking to each other is at that middle level, at that AV node that sort of separates electrically the top half of the heart from the bottom half of the heart. But come back to an ECG and so as to not to split hairs and to try and simplify the ECG interpretation process, what you'll notice here when you're looking carefully at all of these I'll just rub this stuff off. When you're looking at these PR intervals, is that where this PR interval here was about nine, this one you can't measure, this one you can't measure, this one here, it's only just a tiny little piece of a PR interval, so it's around about half, half of a PR interval. This one you can't measure, this one here is around about, I've counted it previously, it's about 11. This one you can't measure, this one you can't measure, and this one here, that sits at around about three. So what you can see from this is that with a nine, with an 11, with a three, there is no consistency, so it's definitely not progressive, it's not a type one, and there's, uh, uh, it's not progressive, nor is it consistent. So there's no consistency, so it's not a type two, and it's not progressive, so it's not a type one. It's all over the place. It goes from 9 to half to 11 to 3 and God knows what else if we were to continue the, um, continue the trace. We have got an erratic PR interval. It's a heart block for the long PR. It's missing beats and it's called a type 3 or a third degree I should say. A third degree heart block or a complete heart block because it's got an erratic PR interval. I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that helps. I'm going to put a, a, a link to um, our ECG interpretation workshop if you're interested in attending. Um, it's a whole lot more fun than just watching it on, uh, on a YouTube or a video. See you later, guys.